22,000 subscribers. That's crazy. And I might be deaf. My ears are ringing. That's so <laughs> Oh my God. It's been a while since we celebrated y'all and it's officially been two years since we moved here to the Netherlands. And some of you know that our residence permit that we're here on is only good for two years. So that means we recently had a very big decision to make. And so did the Netherlands. But before we get to that, we just wanted to take a minute to thank y'all for being along on this crazy YouTube journey with us, especially those of you that have been here since the very, very beginning. We really, really appreciate it. And we really love making these videos and we're stoked that y'all love watching them too. Did you say stoked? Yes, yeah, stoked. I'm trying to, you know, like create new adjectives. It's not really a new adjective. Incorporate new adjectives. You're going to act like you like uh, invented stoked? I invented stoked. Okay. <laughs> And in typical Milestone video fashion, we put it out on Instagram and we asked if y'all had any questions for us. I'm going to try and I don't Oh, there's only one piece of confetti that actually made it onto the cake. Oh, yeah, it kind of blends in. And uh, we answered a bunch of those questions while we were at our beautiful beach house last week in Blissingen. Oh, my God. This is such a big bite. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is a whipped cream cake or a... Uh, uh, <laughs> Slachrome cake from our local bakery, Vonderstera. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, God. Here you go. There's another bite. Here you go. Mmm. That's nice. Yeah. Here, have another. Mm, that's really nice. You like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. All right. So let's go back in time, shall we? It's just like our wedding night. <laughs> our wedding night? <laughs> All right, we're back in our Strahm house in Vlissingen, and it's time for the first Q&A segment about us. The first question is from Sophie611237, and she asks, how are you doing? Oh, thanks for asking, Sophie. We're doing really well. It's a sunny day outside. Speak for yourself. We're at the beach. That's true. Nick Ben Sani asks, how did you two meet? Can I tell the story? Yeah, you can tell the story. Michelle and I met in our freshman year at community college. Yeah. We were both in a theater appreciation class, which was part of the uh, general education thing. You needed to take something from that category. And uh, neither of us really had a enthusiasm for theater. No, we're not theater people. Um, I wish I could remember what the other options to fulfill that requirement were. Everyone took theater. <laughs> yeah. I looked at her and she was wearing a uh, an American Eagle branded shirt of some sort, probably like a fake surf shop. And a jean skirt, I bet. Oh, I doubt you're wearing a jean skirt. You you're probably just so? wearing regular jeans. Yeah. Maybe. That was more of your thing back then. Okay. <laughs> and I knew instantly I had to have her. <laughs> so I asked her friend to introduce me to her and she did. And uh, we dated for uh, two months. Mm -hmm. Maybe about one month was actually really dating. I think yeah. one month was just... No contact. <laughs> yeah, no contact. And uh, we remained friends off and on for about three years after that. Yeah. And then we started dating again and we got married in 2010. Yeah. And we've been married now for 14 years. Captivating Chaos asks, why did you choose to tattoo your wedding bands on? Speaking of, we did it for our five year wedding anniversary, I think. I think it was five, yeah. And uh, honestly, I just thought it was a cool idea. I did not realize at the time how difficult it is to properly tattoo things on your thin finger skin. Yeah, we first got these like, like a dotted line and then that didn't look so good. Mm -hmm. And then we got it filled in. I don't know, I really like it because I'm not a jewelry person. Yeah. You aren't either. And it's just nice to always have it with you without having to wear jewelry. Ralph, formerly of Toronto, asks, what did you do to earn a living in the U.S. before migrating to the Netherlands? Ralph, unfortunately, this answer is pretty boring. It's so boring. We both just worked at like normal, boring tech jobs. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot to say about it. Not a lot it. to say. Super boring, but so like sounds cool, but is actually super boring. Yeah. All right. It is time now for the second Q&A section, which is about our channel. The first one is from Fiona E.K. And she asked, if we could bring one Dutch food item to your friends in the U.S., what would it be? Oh my gosh. Roll mops. <sighs> okay, number one, bringing roll mops on a plane would be an insane thing to do. If that jar breaks, you are certainly screwed. I keep coming back to a fresh strobe waffle. 
People do really like them in the U.S., but they're these little packaged ones that they sell at like fancy like uh, coffee shops mm -hmm. and like the coffee shops that you drink coffee at. And no one there knows what it's like yeah. to get one that's like ooey gooey and just like breaks apart and you get the like the syrup pool in the middle, you know, like you get it. Yeah, no one knows what that's like. And I think it would blow their minds. Do you know what this is like? No, but my gynecologist does. <laughs> Robert Hort? Are you Dutch, Robert? What are you going to do when everything in the Netherlands has been eaten? Well, we're just going to eat it all again. Yeah, I mean, what else are you going to do? Yeah. And that actually tees us really nicely into our next question, which is, do you consider traveling to other European countries and just sightseeing and vlogging about it from Cognac underscore many? Hmm. Well, you know, interestingly, those videos perform really poorly on our main channel. I, and it makes sense as to why. Our channel is really about us exploring the Netherlands. And we've built an audience of y'all that really want to see us explore the Netherlands. And obviously, you know, there's a subset of you that would follow us anywhere that we go. And we really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, there's other places we want to travel to. And we realized last year when we went, we went to Korea and Japan in um, November. October? Yeah, October. And uh, we made that vlog, the House 10 Boss vlog in Japan, which was fun. Mm -hmm. But we didn't do anything at Korea because we were like, what, why bother? It's not going to be a, a video thing. that would do well. And we regretted it. I mean, we like vlogging. It's like, um, it, it it's a fun activity for us. And it's something that we can look back on later and watch and enjoy. Like we've got a video from when we went to Italy mm -hmm. in 2022. And we watch that sometimes and talk about the food that we ate there. And uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why we started our second channel is we wanted to have a place where we could put videos that don't do well necessarily on our main channel. YouTube wants to reward you for making videos that perform well, and they do the opposite of rewarding you when you yeah. post a video that doesn't they do well. They want you to stay kind of in this sort of bubble and not go too far outside right. of it. So the answer is yes. We were waiting first on the decision around our residence permit to book any major travel. And then we were not vlogging any of the travels that we did, really, because we didn't know what to do with them. Yeah, we didn't know what to do with them. But now we have the second channel. So that is something you're interested in. Yeah. And, and if that's not something you want, I apologize. <laughs> Tygo Bont House. OK. Yeah. Tygo Bone House 2611 asked, why did you guys get into going to nude beaches? This is a good question. He's very passionate about this. I am this. passionate yes. about this. <laughs> we had never been to a nude beach before we lived in Austin. And in Austin, Texas, there is a nude beach. And it is the most, in the US, I mean, I guess to some extent here too, but not quite to the same no, level. No, it's totally different. In the US, there are a few nude beaches around the country, but they're like in the absolute like worst possible location. Yeah, you basically had to like cliff climb yeah. to get down to yep. the water. And it was the area of this gigantic lake that was known for having like a muscle infestation and like not the good kind either. Yeah. So you had to wear zebra water muscles. zebra muscles. So you had to wear water shoes or else you would literally slice your feet open. Yeah. Like it was terrible. And when you arrive and leave, you're clothed. But when you're like getting to up to go to the bathroom or something, you're tra you're like climbing these <laughs> rocks and everything and you're butt ass naked. And it's just it's not great. But we loved it. Yeah. Like we that. loved it anyway. Yeah. It was great. I mean, it was just, it was such a different atmosphere than what we were used to at any other beach that we had been to. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was fun. And when we went to Hawaii, we went to a nude beach and we loved it. Um, is there anywhere else? I think those are the two that we went to yeah, before moving here. It. it was just something we really enjoyed. And we also learned that it's great to go to nude beaches because you don't have to worry about a bathing suit. Your bathing suit's not wet. You can just get up and go and then you can just do something afterwards without worrying about like rinsing off, drying off. You have to rinse your feet or something off yeah. if you're covered in sand. But it's just really convenient mm -hmm. and it's just chill. I mean, it's just, it's fun. Yeah. And it's just a lot easier to be naked in those scenarios. Like we, when we went to Flavo Nature, we were in a tiny little like sprinter van basically. Yeah. And it's so hard to get changed yeah. in that tiny space, but you didn't have to worry about you it. Look like you were completely naked. You walked into the little shower stall. You took a shower. You walked out naked. If like, I mean, if you put on, I, it was a little cold some of the days. Like yeah. if you did put something on, it didn't matter. It was just, it was part of it. It was just, 
it's so easy. Yeah. It's so easy to be naked. It's your default. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And uh, I feel like we're giving lots of really like practical reasons, but I think that is like the majority of the is. reason why yeah. we like it so much. It started as a curiosity and it just ended up being something that we really enjoyed. The Borhandisha Boof. Are you full-time content creators or are there also day jobs? This is the million dollar question, I think. Mm -hmm. And I wish there was literally a million dollars attached to it. That'd make my life a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we get this question a lot. Um, we're here in the Netherlands on something called the Dutch American Friendship Treaty, which is a treaty that allows a path to get a residence permit if you are American and you come to the Netherlands to start a business. So I have to have my own business to for us to continue to live here. We've always had this dream to do something together. Like we've always wanted to work on something together and we never really knew what that thing was. So when I moved here, I had briefly done a consulting business right before I moved, um, right before we moved. Yeah. I started, I, I brought that over to the Netherlands. Basically, I, I transferred my company over here and I like, restarted my business here. We have seen a lot of success, thanks, you know, mostly to y'all on YouTube. And uh, it is by no means enough to cover our bills or anything at this point. But we have really enjoyed spending time making these videos for y'all. And you guys seem to like it. And it's been growing. So uh, like three, four months ago, I decided to take a break from the consulting work that I've been doing so that we could both focus on working on this full time. That's how we are able to do two videos a week. Yeah. That's how we are able to do um, videos that are higher quality and spend more time in the cities. And you've noticed probably the length of the videos have, has increased. And um, we want to continue to do that. So we've got a long path ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Like we're, again, we're not making enough money right now to, to sustain ourselves. But our goal here is to figure out how to make YouTube work in some capacity, or at least how to make YouTube working together a bigger part of the, um, money that we need to make every given month so that I can spend less time consulting and more time making really great videos for y'all. Yeah. And we have made our way out to the beach here in Vlissingen. And uh, the last section I believe today is titled About Us in the Netherlands. Shirwadi B asks, how is house hunting going or are you planning on staying where you are? That's a very good question. So we are just in the very early stages of house hunting and it's a little overwhelming because like we're not bound to a specific area in the country or a city, so we can live anywhere. Which means we're casting a really wide net. I think right now our only criteria has to be, it needs to have very good public transportation because we don't have a car and we really don't want to own a car either. We're not really in a rush. It's just, we want to find something that's Perfect. Yeah, and if it takes six months or two years, it's fine. Next up, Danny Direct asks, I love your city blogs. Which cities do you like to visit in the Netherlands? Oh. <laughs> Boy, I feel like that's a cursed question. I know. It's gonna yeah. get us in trouble. Yeah. Uh, do you yeah. want me to take this one? Yeah, go for it. Okay. We love visiting every city in the Netherlands. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we, we love visiting most cities in the Netherlands. I know that's kind of a cop-out answer, but uh, there's like a, we like visiting new cities. Like this is the first time we've ever been to Vlissingen. Um, we like visiting cities that we've been to before and discovering things that we missed. I, I don't know. We really just like exploring different parts of the Netherlands. There is one city that we did not like visiting though. Oh no, you're going to say it? I'm not going to say okay. it. <laughs> Y'all can maybe guess. Although I doubt you'd be able to figure out what it was. No. But there's there only one city I think we've been to in the Netherlands that we just didn't like. Immuno Fan asks, what... Immuno. <laughs> it's Immuno. Immuno Fan asks, <laughs> what do you love most about the Netherlands? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, this one is really good. And I know what my answer is. It's the trains and ease of public transit. Yeah. It's just like a dream come true that we don't own a car and we really don't need one here. Like we came to the beach without a car. We go to the beach in Rotterdam without a car. Did you say we go to beach? We can go to the beach. I said we can go to the beach. We go to beach in Rotterdam without a car. <laughs> and look at this. I know. Look at all the different things you can do here in the Netherlands. And Dutch Belge 3 asks, What's overrated in the Netherlands? Honestly, I don't have a good answer for this one. I guess the obvious answer is probably Amsterdam. I, we've been there like I, I think three times since we moved here. There's, 
I, I don't know. I mean, that's not to say that it's a bad city. I guess it's just like, it's just where everyone goes. And there are a lot of other places that are just as good, if not better, for tourists to visit in the Netherlands. So I, is that, is that an, an oversimple answer? Is that too obvious? I don't think so. Do you have something else? No, I mean, all I can really think of was Amsterdam. We like pondered this question quite a bit. And like, I can't think of anything else. No. Yeah. Nothing? No. All right. It is officially that time. We have the letter in our hand. Obviously, we did decide to renew our residence permit for another five years. We like living here. Yeah. Is anyone, if you, if you watched our channel, you're probably <laughs> not too surprised by us making that decision. So did the Netherlands decide to approve our renewal? Will the Netherlands let us stay here for another five years? Another five years for five more years? No, nah, I'm just kidding. We actually went to go pick up our residence permits yesterday. Of course, we're staying here. Thank you to the Netherlands for approving our renewal. I think that was the only really you know, concerning thing here yeah. is like, will they let us stay for another five years? Of course we're staying. We want to stay. We love being here. We yeah, love... there was no question about yeah. that part. I mean, come on. Did you really think that we were going to go home? If anything, it was just like, up to the... it was just another one. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say it wasn't really like our decision. It was definitely the uh, Dutch government's yeah. decision. Yeah, that seems like it was an easy one for them to make. Once again, thank you all so much for supporting us over the last two years. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you all next week. Ta-da!